Okay, so now I'm just going to kind of give you a walkthrough of what each race is going to be like. Um, we do have two types of timing. So in this one, I will go through a pull tag race. The next one will be a chip timed race. I will let you know that I say now 90% of the races that we time is going to be chip timed. So the pull tag stuff in this video might not be used as often as a chip timed race, but I still want to show it to you just in case you do ever get assigned to one. So going back through some of those tabs, I'm just going to again give you a walkthrough. So on a week to week basis, each race you will show up about 90 minutes prior to the race. It'll be you and an assistant. The assistant is going to be at the registration table while you set up all the finish line stuff. So you will set up the speakers, the race clock, the inflatable, things like that. And the assistant is going to be helping type in new race day participants using the enter screen. So if they do have any, if they need any help with that, just be able to pop up this enter screen, tell them what they need to type in and how to save it. So then once you get all that stuff set up and the race begins, again, this is going to be a pull tagged event. I will show you how to initialize the time tag here in just a second using the actual um, camera on my phone looking at the device and then what you want to do is initialize so one second and let me pull up the video with the time tag so this device is called a time tech this is one of the two devices that we use to manually pull tag an event um, on it you will see buttons such as on off stop printer on and off um, paper advance, start clock, things like that. Um, but I'm just gonna kinda walk you through how to put it on and how to connect it, one, to the laptop, and two, how to sync it. So you want to hit the on button, give it a second to load, and then you want to hit number two because this is a road running event. You wanna hit one to time it. Is this going to be a new race? Yes, it is. Same race format. Always hit two. No. Always hit three so that it gets the most precise time in the hundreds. It's always going to have one wave. So hit one and then you want to hit enter. It's always going to be a single lane. So hit two. Regular timer one. Hit fast print one. New race one and you always want to begin it at 00.00, .00. so always hit one right here. And I'm going to go ahead and put the printer off just because it's not needed. And now in my lap I have two cables. Let me pull it out. This cable is what button you hit when people finish. And you also hit it when the race begins. So all you have to do is you take this little end if I can get a hold of it. And you just want to put it into any one of these tabs down here at the bottom. It could be on any one. So just to show you, I'm going to put it in the third one. So now let's say the race is counting down. Um, have your assistant or anybody that you can grab if you're not able to. So if you have to um, announce and shoot the gun or anything like that, just have somebody make sure somebody hit this button. Um, when the race begins. So three, two, one, boom. As you can see now the official clock has begun. So this is going to be the actual race clock, um, the official finish line times. You can take this time as it's going up, go to the actual race clock and set the time so that it displays it. The display clock does not have to be dead on. Um, so let's say now it says 25, 26, as long as it's within one, one or two seconds of that, it's okay. Um, so now the next step is you want to get the second cable that's going to come in the box. Hit the black one. I know it's kind of tough to, you know, tell, but it's this black one. Um, so what you want to do with this one is you want to hook it up to the laptop. I don't need that hooked up. So it's just a USB. Hook it up to your laptop. And then you have a second end to it, if I can get to it. 
and it's going to look something like this. You want to hook it up to this side, obviously, because it's going to be the one that matches. And then just plug it in. As you can see, the laptop itself just made a noise saying that, you know, we have something plugged up. So now you want to go to your the laptop that you are going to be using. Um, when it is a pull tag event, I'm always going to have um, your PC logo up here um, so that you can get a hold of it. So you want to find this PC and then you want to right click it and you want to hit manage. So then what this is going to do is it's going to pop up your PC and you want to go to device manager and then you want to go to your ports. And then all you have to do is you got to, you have to remember this number, which is going to be three. It's not always going to be three, um, but that's why you have to go through this my PC step to get this specific number. So then hit remember three, and then you want to go to the race file itself. Now in the last video, I told you I was going to show you how to initialize the timing devices that we use. So you want to hit initialize and then you want to hit initialize external timers. So in this case, this is called a time tech. It is the name of the machine is on the device. Time tech. So you just want to locate it under the device. So as you can see, I've located time tech. This port button is going to be the three that you just located. The event is going to go to the event finish because that is the name of the results the big blue screen that I showed you in the last video and then with a pull tags event just make sure this is not checked that's all you have to do and then hit OK and then as you can see now if we go to the results we can as you can see it's about 320 321 I'm going to begin clicking this about three times so then as you can see, the times manually go in to the blue screen, so you do not have to manually type it. So right now I'm going to click it at 3.35, and it's going to pop up 3.35.26, because it's going to be based on that hundredths of a second. So in a pull tag event, you have your assistant or somebody um, clicking this as people finish, and it's going to manually have the times into it, and then all you have to do is have... Um, the, the volunteers of the event um, pull tag the bib numbers it has a little tag at the bottom of each bib that you take off and you put them down a stringer so that it stays in the in the order that they finish or you can also have somebody just write down bib numbers as they finish so let's say I finished in number one um, I think it went 23 to 30 so I'm just going to type in bibs and then Boom. That's all you really have to do, and I'll even add a time just so it matches what I just typed in. But that's all you have to do with the pull tag of the event. So then, as in the last video, if you go over here to the results and the awards listing, right click it, output to editor, it's going to pop up all those times and the names. Um, obviously, this is not going to be a 3 minute 5k, it's going to be, you know, accurate times, but this is just a testing video that I wanted to show you. But that's all a pull tag event involves. Um, toughest thing is to just make sure that you don't have any bandits if you do so let's say let's say your assistant hit the button just now and the person does not have a bib number all you have to do is go beside of it you can either delete the time or you can type in zero and it's going to show unknown bandit that's all you have to do so either either way it's fine with me um, you can delete them you can delete the time or you can type in zero um, that's pretty much it. Um, we also have a video that you need to set up on pull tags races just as a backup. Um, but um, pull tags pretty easy. It can get complicated, but that's why we kind of made it so that most races now have to use chip timing. But that's that's all. That's all that's involved with this one. When you finish, all you have to do is click off, and it's good to go. Now something else I want to show you since I have this up is let's say the race began and for some reason 
the timing device did not begin. Um, and let's say somebody had it, had it as like a stopwatch type thing. So let's say the stopwatch says two minutes. I'm going to quickly go through it again. So road running time, new race, two, no, three hundreds, one, enter, single lane, regular, fast print, new. So in this case, if you do not manage to hit this device upon the race actually beginning, you can go through that step and you want to hit one this time and it's going, excuse me, you want to hit two this time and it's going to allow you to set the clock in which place you want it to begin. So let's say you want it to begin at two minutes. You want to hit zero, 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 two minutes. So now when you hit that button, let's say on your stopwatch, it now says 158, 159, two minutes, 201, 202, it's going to pop up adding that two minutes to the time that you began. So I uh, hope that makes sense. Um, most more cases than not, you won't have to use that, but I just wanted to show you just in case. And that's all the time tech is involved. The other one is um, a little bit easier than this machine, um, but it's currently away being fixed, so I cannot show you. As soon as it gets back, I'll make a video with that one.